I'm going to be real direct and honest with you guys. I look at this map. I look at this map here that I've been staring at. Sometimes for over an hour, you know, two or three hours at a time. And I look at it and I want answers. I want answers. I think we deserve answers to these, these problems, these situations that have been going on. You know, um, it's time to get answers. And that's why this second video you're going to go ahead and do <clears throat> uh, after the earlier video is directly on Jelani Days providing a good, you know, good summary and a good update. I want answers. This map and what's on this map deserves for all of us to have answers. And hey, you know, I don't do this just as a random thought or something like that. It's the whole reason my channel exists. It's the whole reason that I do what I do out here is I want answers once and for all for what's on this map. I want to know what happened. Once and for all to Jelani Day, to Jelani Brinson, to Daniel Robinson. I want to know what happened. And just as much as I want to know what happened to each of them, I also want to get to the bottom of how it happened. So thank you again. Be sure to uh, spread the word. More to come. Thank you. Okay, folks. Briefly, we're going to be doing this. Now, why we are here in um, Peru, Illinois, is something that's interesting that you probably didn't know about or were not aware of until now, is that Peru, Illinois, and specifically also Peoria, Illinois, are known as a city of music. Peru, Illinois, in many uh, different cases throughout history, has been seen as a town kind of an older city that's very attuned and fascinated by music. Now we find this very interesting because of course there's those UPS trucks again but this is in uh, 2019 so this is far before the um, the alleged first disappearance of Oribe Contine and then of course their murder and subsequently the murder of Jelani Day. But what's interesting about this is it teaches you some different things uh, about the history, really, of Illinois, of the Illinois area in specific. And these things will be very valuable to know as we move forward with really being able to tie up and solve these cases. Now, this right here is one of the older music halls and music institutes and it's still there to this day interestingly enough this is one of the main music halls in um, Peru, Illinois <clears throat> and so what they would do is they would come here and they listen to all these different musical concerts musical themed events um, and you know Jelani Day would come here different students would come here likely Oribe Contine would also come at certain times to these music halls and they're mainly located right here in downtown Peru, Illinois you can't mistake it this is where you find sometimes Manfred eating music that's right his name's Jeff Manfredini this is where you found, you know, sometimes the Red Hot Chili Peppers, one of their equivalent groups out here, you know, rolling it up. And they would go in there and they would attend the musical events that were put on right here in Peru, Illinois. And there's no mistaking it. They all came here. This is called the West, West Clocks. Um, if we can see that. Hopefully we can see that a little bit closer, but it's called... Sometimes they call it the West Clocks, uh, you know, Academy. And so right in here, they would come here, you know, it's at least a year or so before the murder, but it's very interesting to make note of these historical things to be able to put the picture fully together. So they come here, and they come to this area right here around the foyer. 
and they go in there and they'd attend these different musical events. Now I don't know if um, they did it come the year 2021, but I'm going to presume the, the majority of students probably kept coming to these different events that they put on here in Peru, Illinois. And uh, that's why this is very interesting to look at. This is a very worthy expedition. And we're going to be mapping some things out in map time here as I go down. Let's see if I can expand that, supersize the map a bit more. Um, as I go down near the uh, the actual boat boat docks. So they have a pet shop over here. You know, they have the Thyme Craft Kitchen and the St. Valentine's Church right over here near Buffalo Street, you know, and so on. And uh, what's great about this is it really allows me to now maneuver to where I really need to uh, to go, what I really need to see and, and stuff like that. Because when you're looking at it on just a static map and you can't really go in and out of every single area, it doesn't do the job for really being able to get everything done the way it needs to be done. And so this is great. You can see the Kronos Trucking Company. You can see exactly what kind of cars they tried to show off at their little auto shows and things. So I'm going to be mapping it out. And we're going to be going down to the front, you know, the Illinois River. We're going to be going down to the boat docks, too. So thank you. That's it for this uh, first part. And there's more on the way. Thank you. So folks, they tried to uh, cause some real problems. They kind of made me lose at least one hour or something an hour and a half due to some kind of strange glitch with uh, my phone because my phone was about at 68% uh, charge and they did something to it anyway there's not too much else to cover this is the Edgewater cabin and this is what's very strange about all of this you know it's down out here in the middle of the basically sticks little tiny rivet called Oglesby, Illinois. It's actually still a part of Peru, Illinois, believe it or not. And so we're finally getting to see the actual area um, where interesting things occurred that I would say have very high importance to the Jelani Day case and situation overall. It's just strange, you know, to see all this. This is the LaSalle County Broadcasting Building. Then we have uh, Fender Menders Auto Zone of Peru. It's just interesting. Very interesting. There we can see one of the trucks. It's kind of the unmarked trucks that they have roaming around. This one apparently, though, belongs to uh, the uh, Sakura Company. It's kind of an unusual trucking company that's only in Peru for some reason. And then, of course, it's right next to the golf course. So we're, we're seeing numerous golf courses and things like that right around this area by uh, Cedar Creek on the other side of the uh, the Illinois River. So this is a, a very um, dangerous area. And this was the area, you know, where Jelani Day washed up in, in the Illinois uh, River. Literally. Just a strange area. And it is kind of... Uh, a town, but it's like like a town mixed with farmland is how I describe Peru when I look at it now. It's just, it's unusual. It's a town, but it's, you know, it's a town mixed with farmland. It's a creepy log cabin out there. It's right next to the water. You know, there's strange farms, a strange trucking company right directly next door. And there's people always going down to these boat docks. 
So thanks. Okay, so this is where things get interesting. Now, now we're near what are known as the boating docks. This is interesting because, as you can see, there's some strange trucks driving around. Unmarked kind of trucks. And that is strange because they all have tinted windows. Now, this is back in 2019. So this is interesting to be able to finally venture out, map all this out. We're in the area that's on the other side of the canal, boat docks. And we're going on what's called uh, Route 351 of Illinois. Peru, Illinois. Actually, it's um, kind of right outside of Peru, Illinois, but still technically a part of it, and a little very, very small inlet town called Oglesby, Illinois, interestingly enough. So this is right here on the Illinois Riverfront. So we're finally getting out there. We're getting out to check out the water. And we're getting out in this area to see what in the world was going on out here. So hold on there. We're on, of course... East 350, 50th Road. Now there are some strange things that are right out here in the boat docks area, which nobody's talking about, of course, yet. I wonder why. Edgewater Cabin is one of those things. This is a strange little cabin type thing. It's out in the middle of nowhere, kind of at the tip of Peru, in just an inlet area called, uh, you know, Oglesby. Illinois that's I guess that logistically is still a part of Peru but they don't consider it a part of it so whatever but that's kind of part of what's out here this right here is important to document as well just for a moment we're going to be documenting this um, this is what's known as the uh, Edgewood Park Golf Golf Club which is located you know McNabb Illinois and that's very close to Rochelle this is the uh the golf club, one of the main golf clubs that Matthew C. Everett, the faith preacher, you know, the faith-based leader, came to all the time. He loved Edgewood Park uh, Golf Club. And make no mistake about it, he was also friends with uh, Abby Collins. He at least knew her. So she may have come to the same golf club as well. And I'm sure other friends of Matthew C. Everett probably came to this golf club. This is back in 2018. Edgewood Park Golf Club. Very nice one. It's right there near Rochelle. It's also next to LaSalle County. And of course we see there's churches and things out here. So this is the exact type of place that Matthew C. Everett frequented quite often. Remember, he's, he's a black man. He's old-time church-style kind of guy. And so he went to a lot of these faith-based groups over here. He loved the golf club at Edgewood. He loved similar things over here. See, because I like to get into the actual heads of these suspects sometimes. We see now there's an old-style barn that's kind of used sometimes for faith-based functions and things like that. It's admittedly kind of strange that they all seem to be grouped around that area. Juan Galarza probably also came out here. Don't let anybody tell you different. This is an area they have like an old style church building, kind of farmland out here. They've got a perfect place where Matthew Ever or Matthew C. Everett in this case probably did some of his sermons and so on. There's a barn house even in the distance. It's just interesting. So for historical reasons, we're going to document this for a moment. And this is also where they used to do a lot of holes in the Gulf. Edgewood Park. 18 holes and, you know, you've got it made. And these people have a lot to do with the different circumstances surrounding Jelani and also circumstances surrounding Oribe Contin. Thank you. 
So this is what this is what it's really all about, you know, you guys. This is the real highlight. Kind of the highlight of the night, especially is I wanted to be able to get down here. This is what's called Water Street. And we're now in the exact area nearby where Jelani's body was found in the Illinois River. This is amazing for, you know, historical reasons and many other reasons aside from that. So we see some interesting things. An unmarked truck, which is kind of strange. This area has really never changed that much over the years. But this was in 2019, before the incident occurs. And we're going down what's called Water Street. This is the Riverfront Bar and Grill of Peru. And here is where Oribe Contin and later Jelani Day, most likely, and others would go down to hang out, you know, another part of the whimsical nature of Peru and its musical heritage. They would come down here and they'd want to hear the music. And this is even at least a year or more before all of that. But people hung out here, you know, this this was the place, Water Street. Go up and up down the area, you know, where the canals are, see the train. See the train runs directly next to this area. And that's very interesting. Because there's a couple of unmarked uh, trucks back there that honestly look pretty suspicious. And I'm going to have those marked out, have a little bit of information um, about those as well. But this is the area where Jelani officially disappeared. And boy, it has not changed very much over the years. This is such a nice looking area during the daytime imagine how nightmarish it is it must be at night my goodness you can just imagine the type of murders and things that would occur in this area right by the canals that cover water street it's just amazing and here we are we're coming right up to the bridge and this I saw a couple of unusual things as well. But this will round out our journey for now. Uh, that warehouse, like I said, is very unusual. At Maze Lumber. And I don't know if they still call it Maze Lumber, but there's some unmarked uh, vehicles and things hang out over there that are also financially linked to... Uh, Bertolino, apparently, that's no surprise, but they've got some unmarked cars, and they got this van parked out here, right off of the side of Plain Street and Rock Street. So very unusual area, um, very beautiful area, for certain, but is you know, it's the last kind of place that you want to be hanging around or going to musical events and things like that at night, most certainly. It's the very last place you'd want to be at night. And that is unfortunately what uh, occurred around the situation with, with Jelani Day. And so we see there... The bridge, the Peru Illinois Bridge, and in a future video we're going to be, you know, documenting that much more. So thank you, thank you once again. And just real quick, we show that there's a couple of unmarked trucks, unmarked vehicles, and some interesting things over here, including a shed, which will be looked at and investigated. Later on, when we get into the other Jelani Day videos. But man, this has been something. It really is quite amazing. And to experience it up close like this, I'm just, I'm speechless. So, it's great news. That's all for now. Like, comment, subscribe.
So again, folks, you know, the more the more that I look at this, I would just really, really hate to be Jelani, Jelani Day, or one of these victims, because that is an amazing area. It's 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 great to visit, but it's a real bruiser, you know, to stay or stay at the hotel. So, once again. Looking forward to covering more of this in the Christina Whitaker case and uh, look for some later updates also on Summer Wells. Thank you.